Hi all, I am Gaurav. Welcome to Introduction to Scala. I am starting this series with an intent of sharing my Scala knowledge. Hi and welcome to this talk on arrays and mutable collections in Scala. So far we have only focused on immutable collections. By default, Scala collection type is immutable. Scala always wants you to work with immutable collections as it reduces the risk of side effects and it is safe to work with Scala or any other programming language. However, there are times when you need your collections to be mutable. One of the collections that can be mutable in Scala is arrays. Mutable collections are different from arrays. Arrays are actually technically not collections. Mutable collections can grow and shrink. In addition, the contents of these collections can be modified. Arrays cannot grow or shrink. They have fixed length. However, elements of an array are mutable. So arrays are somewhere in between mutable collections and completely immutable collections. All the immutable collections lists, maps, and sets are in scala.collection.immutable package, where all the mutable collections are in scala.collection.mutable package. Similar to immutable package, Scala mutable pa uh, package has list buffer, which is mutable version of list, maps, and sets. Let us see arrays in action. Again, I am going to use Scala interactive shell or REPL for demo. Again, arrays are not technically collection. Unlike mutable collections, arrays have fixed length. The number of elements in an array is fixed. However, the objects contained within an array can be modified. There are two ways of creating array. I am going to create an array of strings. First, using new operator, where you have to provide the type and size of an array. Or, we can use array apply method. Along with list of values, needless to mention that Scala will infer the type of array of strings. You can get the size of an array by invoking array.size method. In our case, it will return 3. We can access elements of an array using index notation. Notice how arrays are indexed starting from 0. We can also go ahead and change elements of an array. Here, for instance, we have reassigned element 0 to be the string Awesome Scala. And if we now print out the contents of entire array, we can see that we have successfully altered the first element of this array. Similar to list, you can also invoke other higher order functions such as for each and marry map on array. Here is a brief example of for each and map used on array. There are many more higher order functions available. You can refer to Scala docs and play around with all those higher order functions. Next up is mutable collections. It is quite simple to create mutable collection. If you want to create a mutable collection, you need to explicitly import scala.collection.mutable package. Now we will try to create a map. The map this map has both key and value as string and string. I will mention few popular languages along with their founders. Once we have imported the right package, notice how Scala has inferred the map type as mutable map of strings. The syntax of creating list buffer once again is very familiar. We will use list buffer apply method here and provide the elements. I am trying to create a list buffer of programming languages. We can easily modify our mutable collections. There are, there are few operations which are common across all the mutable collections. For example, if I want to add a new element to list buffer, I can use plus equal to operator. And we can observe the result we can observe the result that Java is added to the list. Next is to add a list of languages to our list buffer. You can use plus plus equal to operator to add new elements to our existing list buffer. I will add C and Python to our list of popular programming languages. 
as I have said earlier, these methods are common across all the mutable collections. You can try plus equals to and plus plus equal to operator on mutable map on your own. Similar to list, you can also invoke other higher order functions such as for each and map on list buffer as well. Again, I will show a quick demo of for each and map used on list buffer. You can refer to Scala docs to more to know more about available higher order functions on list buffer. Once you are happy with all the operations that you want to perform on your mutable collection, it is very easy to come back to the immutable world. If you want to convert your mutable map to immutable map, you can use dot to map method. And similarly, to convert your list buffer to list, you can use dot to list method. In this video, I have demoed the most popular mutable collections, that is, array, list buffer, and map. But there are two more interesting mutable collections that you can explore on your own. These two have pretty much the same higher order functions available as for list buffer and map. First is array buffer. If you remember, we told that array has fixed length. You can use array buffer if you need an array of varying length. Most operations on an array buffer have the same speed as for an array. The next is string builder. Just like an array, just like an array buffer is used to create mutable arrays, a list buffer is used to create mutable lists, a string builder is used to create mutable strings. String, build, string builder are so commonly used that they are already imported into default namespace. You can, insta you can instantiate it by using new string builder. That covers all the collections. Hope the talk was fun. Please do let me know how you guys are doing with Scala. You can also tweet me or send me a message on Twitter. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Please post your comments and suggestions.